Bless up guys, Yannick Reed here and welcome back to the YouTube channel. As I said before, my name is Yannick Reed and on this channel we like to talk about tech, creativity and lifestyle, focusing on photography and videography. So if that sounds interesting to you, just hit the subscribe button for more videos just like this one. You asked for it and now you finally got it. Today is our intro to Lightroom basics the elevator pitch for lightroom we did one for photoshop before linked in the description but now we're doing one for lightroom as you guys have requested before i dive in i just want to remind you guys that i did a tutorial about every tool in visco i know that lightroom isn't visco but that video is important because i go through every single tool in visco which is a common set of tools that will be found in many photo editors including Lightroom. I don't want to spend too much time in this brief intro going too in depth on every single tool when there's some resources here that you can check out and then come back to this video and then dive into Lightroom with everybody. So just before we start, we we'll have to kind of help you understand what Lightroom is because some people see pro photographers using Lightroom and they're not really understanding what is Lightroom or how it's different from, from Photoshop. Lightroom is basically an application that is geared towards the collection, organization and editing of a large number of photos. How this differs from Photoshop is that Photoshop is kind of geared to working on like one photo at a time and going in on that photo and finishing it. Photoshop is kind of a little bit more one photo where Lightroom is like a batch. So Photoshop is where you may do an album cover where maybe Lightroom is something that maybe you would edit a whole 3000 images from a wedding. There's a bunch of different kind of Lightrooms around the place that you may have interacted with and not interacted with. But I'm going to help you to understand which Lightroom we're going to be working on today. Lightroom is kind of split into two main sides of the application. Lightroom CC and we have Lightroom Classic. Lightroom CC has many different iterations including the mobile version which you've probably used on your phones or your tablets. This is a Lightroom that is geared towards cloud and syncing up your images and all sorts of stuff like that. So there's a version that is on the desktop, a version that's on the browser, a version that's on mobile, all sorts of stuff. We're not going into Lightroom CC today. We're going into Lightroom Classic, which is kind of the, as it says, classic version of Lightroom that is kind of just geared to having all the tools professionally on your desktop. The two apps are very similar, but one would say in just for short terms is that Classic has like all of the in-depth tools while Lightroom CC kind of tries to simplify everything and kind of make it a little bit more approachable. So a lot of the principles that you can learn in this video about Lightroom Classic may carry over to Lightroom CC, don't worry. So let's just dive into the application right now, we're ready for deal with it. Okay, so here we are on my desktop. I have already imported just five raw images into my computer and i have them just here in a folder called demo photos so this is kind of like the first step when you're ready to work in lightroom you import your images and put them in a folder where you feel comfortable where they're gonna be staying that can be on your desktop or your hard drive or your pictures that's for photo organization so i'm gonna open lightroom i'm just gonna pull it over to the side a little and i'm just gonna drag my folder you see that little plus sign right here and let it go so we're in the import dialog. What you guys just need to know is that you have some different ways to bring stuff into Lightroom, but I'm gonna teach you Lightroom my way. I'm gonna click add, which means I'm gonna add photos to the catalog without moving them. So that strategy allows you to put your photos where you want them to be on your computer. And then you're telling Lightroom, yo, see my photos here? Just bring them into the library, don't move them. And we're just gonna hit import just like that and it kind of just lays out what you've recently imported right in front of you you know this is the library panel just like i was saying before lightroom kind of deals a lot with organization and this part of lightroom this section is just 
the part that just helps you to explore and organize your files over here in the folder section you see you can kind of see folders and hard drives and stuff on your computer you can actually reorganize stuff from inside Lightroom if you want to but we're not gonna get too much in that today the panel everybody really wants to know about is where we're editing and that's right here at the develop tab so you click develop and that takes you right into the editing part of Lightroom you see that the dialogue kind of changes up a little bit at the bottom here we'll have what they call the film strip just all of the selected photos like say if you just imported some photos as you can see they're all right here we can move from any of these photos by just clicking on them back and forth and we can kind of access them so you can kind of dive in so i said on this side we have presets and you should have an idea of what presets do because i'm gonna dive into presets a little later i'm gonna hide them we don't need to worry about snapshots history and collections today for this interview <laughs> interview for this tutorial we're gonna go right over here it's just where we have all our editing tools from top to bottom um we have our histogram which you know kind of just tells us where our darks and lights lives where our reds and blues and greens live so you can see this image has a lot of blue in there has a little bit of red you know it kind of just showing your intensity and where it kind of stands in like brightness and darkness where you guys as beginners where i want you guys to focus in this lesson is right here in the basic panel you can open or close any of these panels here by just clicking the arrow i want you guys to really focus on basic for this intro just starting as simple as we have it we have white balance and moving any of these sliders is going to affect our image a key benefit to using lightroom before we even go any further is that none of the edits that you make while working in lightroom are permanent unlike photoshop you can undo redo anything that you have in lightroom that's why it's beneficial if you feel like you want to come back to your image later and try a whole different edit you can do that without damaging the image i will have our white balance and you know our white balance kind of controls the balance between blue and yellow and green and magenta so if your image has a certain color cast like if you say oh man this looks kind of blue you put it over to the yellow there's an eyedropper tool right here that you can click it and if you notice something in the image is supposed to be white like maybe an eyeball you can kind of click it and we'll kind of adjust that's this is kind of off still so maybe you know you kind of click that and you kind of get like a better white balance you work with it so you know we have things like exposure that controls like the brightness of your image contrast you know you can see that it's controlling the range of light to dark and you can see our histogram is being affected by that you can see your highlights which is the um, brighter parts of your images your shadows your darker parts of your images your whites the brightest parts of the image, your blacks, the darkest parts of the image. So you want to always just be playing with any slider that you see in Lightroom, just to kind of visually see how it affects your image. Texture deals with the micro contrast in the image. So you can kind of see we're sliding around texture. You can see just the difference between like his shirt and his skin. Clarity also deals with micro contrast as well but it affects color a little bit more so you see that we're not really changing any color as we move texture but as we move clarity you can see that there is a little bit of color change right there you know if you have like a particularly foggy image or a really low contrast image the haze can kind of add haze or kind of remove it by doing contrast intelligently saturation deals with the intensity of all of the colors in the image so as you move this slider it raises the intensity of all colors equally and same for the opposite so with vibrance now vibrance takes the weakest colors and raises their intensity so if there's anything you see how it's kind of a little bit different from saturation when you boost up saturation you see all of these stuff just kind of break but when you boost up vibrance it kind of protects those already saturated images and when you pull vibrance down it doesn't make it fully black and white either 
so yes, the saturation when you pull it down it makes it fully black and white learning about lightroom a lot of stuff you probably really want to start off in the basic tab it's really easy to if you feel like oh i kind of want to start over there's a reset button right here and you go back to the immediate start of the image we have other stuff here like the tone curve which i want to go over in a totally separate video but you know it kind of is a more detailed way to control your highlights mids and darks very powerful tool we have the hsl sliders which i went over in another video in the visco video but basically you can control the hue saturation and luminance of every single color individually in this panel also super powerful we have split toning which allows us to add colors to our highlights or shadows and what i mean by that is like you can add red to your highlights or add red to your shadows playing around with this can give you some unique effects a lot of people would like to emulate film will be living in split toning detail kind of deals with sharpness and stuff like that lens correction is if you have a little bit of weirdness going on with your lens right there you see Lightroom kind of corrects it by straightening out the um, edges it detects what camera you're using and just automatically applies it so we'll leave that on effects has stuff like a vignette you know if you want a little white or black edge around your stuff like that and you have grain where you can add artificial grain to your image to make it feel a little bit more filmic and calibration is just a whole nother beast to itself so that's just me just kind of running through all those tools very briefly but for us new persons we want to just kind of build our experience in basic first and then we build out some of these tools up here i want you guys to know about this first tool here is our crop tool this is where we can you know crop our image right now i have the aspect ratio which is important set to original what that does is that it will it will allow me to crop in a way that is proportional exactly proportional to the original size of my image so i can't get no weird shape you notice how the square is is just kind of locked into that but if i go over here and change it maybe to custom i can crop it any which way i want you also have a whole lot of other kind of formats here like one by one perfect if you want to get your instagram square you know just total different sizes and stuff like that that you may want to be comfortable with and if you're working with a specific size that you want to crop to there's always custom down here where you can put in exactly what you want and get it but i always like to go to original because i always take my images in the size that i kind of want them to be and at most i may just may use like a one by one where i can probably see how it would look on instagram in this tool too we can also rotate just to know you know if like our horizon is kind of off we can straighten it a little you know just make sure i have these guidelines here that allow us to you know kind of use it as a grid to say hey is that straight and then you hit enter and then it automatically does remember lightroom totally non-destructive program so don't worry crop in crop out you won't lose any data or throw away anything over here we have like a spot removal tool which is good to you know maybe get rid of we're zooming in here we can use the spot removal tool kind of get down and this is Zaya. Zaya is a pretty clean face you kind of just do that and Lightroom will kind of try and find an intelligent spot that kind of matches wherever you drew to that spot and it's not just for faces it can be for like um patterns and stuff like that let's see uh i doubt it would work for here i'm trying to all right look see we have a, a little manhole here in the road you just draw over it it's a lot like touch retouch and it finds something similar and just patches it over here and we got rid of that manhole so that's a spot removal tool it's not magic it's not perfect you have these three tools here 
what really happens is that you see everything that's in basic you see how it kind of pops up over here where you're seeing stuff saying this mask and stuff like that these three tools you can have a whole range of sliders tweaked to these tools and it only applies to those tools that wasn't the greatest discussion just watch so we have the adjustment brush tool when i click it i get my own selection of sliders to apply it for let me just turn exposure all the way down so when this brush comes over here now and i click wherever i brush is gonna apply what i had to the slider as bring down you know just exposure and i can tweak it after or whatever and there's this little button here that says show mask overlay which gives me a little red panel to show me exactly where my um adjustments are being made so this tool as i say is like a brush where you can just brush in exact where you can brush in exact changes so say i want to bring back a lot of this sky i can bring my exposure down and just brush in the sky just brush in the sky alone we can turn off and then we can bring you see that we can just kind of bring it down but you know you kind of have to balance it so it looks realistic the radial brush now same method but just different application this one deals with like a perfect circle and this is good for stuff like portraits where people kind of sit in the middle where maybe you're like all right i don't want to boost the exposure just here a little like i love how my image is looking i just want to bring like a little pop here or you know you just i just want to give a little i want to give like a little pop to the face a little more contrast just to the face and you can hit done you want to go back just click the same tool and you'll have a dot wherever you did the work hit delete it's gone the graduated filter now is can use this image is it's like a gradient it's like a very gentle application of it so that's like perfect for like skies so when i pull in this thing now here i know so i just kind of want to bring back the sky because the sky is gone but i don't want it to affect the ground so you kind of seen it here if when i click, click select mass overlay you see how where it's intensely red is where the most of the application will be applied most of the effect and as you go down, it will kind of blend very gently. So let's turn that off. And I know someone kind of bring in the sky a little more. You see how it kind of does a little neat. And then you can kind of tweak how drastic you want the gradient to apply. Like if you want it to be a you know razor sharp or you want it to kind of gradually kind of waft over. And it's not just exposure alone, you can use these tools, you can use white balance. You know, you can use contrast, you can use clarity, you can use any combination of any of these effects, and you can even save them. So if you say, all right, I know I like to add a little crips, <laughs> which is Jamaican for crisp, you know, I kind of apply just a little bit of clarity to this brush, just to maybe brush over clothes or jewelry, just to make that stuff kind of pop. So you can make your own custom brushes this tool here is just a red eye tool it's really simple if you just had like an image with flash you just brush it over some red eyes it's gone no need to waste any time on it so we're coming out of these tools and the last thing that i kind of want to bring you guys through is presets so presets now you see all these different panels that i showed you on the right all right yeah you don't want it that every time you come into lightroom you have to kind of guess and spell with each image and like tweak every single slider to get some consistency presets now are kind of saved methods of editing the image you see i click bright and you see over here a bag of stuff change and stuff like that i click high contrast and you see a whole heap of stuff change high contrast with detail and it's just a storage of all of, of setting all of these sliders at a certain space and a bunch of these stuff 
the great powerful thing about Lightroom and presets now is you can make your own which is what I have done you know so when you're going to use a presets you can save all of these edits that you have and like a, if you develop a specific look you can just have it over here I have all these funny names because you know I named them after mangoes and Jamaican things to kind of make them feel unique in mine people have been interested to buy these you let me know in the comments if you're interested in buying my presets for example Julie mango is a preset that kind of tweaks the colors a little bit to play with a orange and teal kind of contrast and this image is kind of blown out so I already know I need to just kind of pull down the exposure and I say already I kind of getting a little vibes with my image and I can go over to this image and I can click Julie mango and it applies the same exact effect and if I want to pull down the exposure too I can do that I have different um presets over here and I can click them and get a whole different look of those different stuff that I've saved that's just the power of Lightroom you can experiment you can like change around and all of this stuff in a separate video I will teach you how to save your own presets but for now I really just want you guys to focus on being able to come into Lightroom and use all these tools and feel a little bit confident once you have an understanding of these basics in Lightroom I can go into like individual little tutorials about the different stuff in Lightroom so you can build upon that knowledge because Lightroom is very easy to use but it has a whole lot of features that you don't want to overwhelm yourself with in the start pretty much just because I have my presets I can go in here and really not spend too much time in Lightroom just like how you guys saw my little editing tutorial I'm just doing a little quick edit here you know this is from the other day when up there was kind of foggy so we can use a little bit of dehaze now I actually like seeing the haze a little bit I want to bring a little vibrance I like that it looks kind of cold but even though I want the environment to look cold I still want his face to look warm so I will go to temp here and just add a little warmness here and then I'll use a brush and just see it's very subtle but just adding back some warmness to his skin alone and then I can go back into the edit you know I can play around I want the environment to be dark I can do this cause I, maybe I want him to have a little bit more pop you can see it's kind of still set to temp right now but I really want it to be set to exposure and I just just a little pop you can see it in our little window over here a little thumbnail window just a small small pop to say I goes there and you know me I always love a neat little crop just like that contrast feels a little low I'm just get it up a little yeah, we can up it up a little more and I feel like I want to use my Crips brush because I want the shade to pop so I can just brush him it's really subtle and you just see like just a little micro contrast come out and stuff like that and boom that is how you edit an image and then you say Yannick how do I get my image out of Lightroom you can click one or multiple images using shift but we just need one click right click export and then you go into export the export panel is super expansive because it allows you to export various files for print for web and stuff like that more than likely you will be exporting for the web so really and truly um you may not have any presets in here that's really the best for 
the web. The closest thing I can see here is for email hard drive, I do believe. Like when you go in here, it will export, like when you click it, it will kind of put in a, a bunch of settings, which I'd really have to go into another video. But I'm gonna show you my export settings here um, and what's really important to see about them. Most important part where I want you guys to see is you go down here to file settings. Make sure you kind of have it at JPEG, push your quality up to somewhere between 80 and 90 and just make sure say you can resize the image to fit. If you don't want, if you like to, you can just turn it off and you can just get a, like, a nice big image but just to quickly show you this resize to fit just kind of shrinks my image just a little bit intelligently so the files are not huge and i can upload them to instagram fast you hit export it's gonna ask you where you want to put them you can make a new folder saying edited images i hit and over here you'll just see a progress bar your export happening and once it's finished i should be able to go on my desktop see edited images and see the photo that i just worked on in lightroom right here so yes i know that was a whole lot of information right now lightroom is super complicated i realize there's a whole lot of stuff that we didn't get into just for the sake of time i just want you guys to just go into lightroom and try out some stuff before and i will do some tutorials on isolated little things that can help you to supplement the information that you already have if you have any questions you already know drop them down in the comments if you have anything to add drop them down in the comments so our community can benefit from this and you don't know i'll be looking out to hear from you please check the other links if you feel like you need to understand some more stuff about like exposure and contrast and stuff like that i went into that stuff in the visco video check it out and if you have a friend that is an aspiring photographer and interested in using Lightroom, send them this video. It's free. Free sauce. You don't know. Stay safe. Behave on yourself. And continue to bless up yourself.